All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe and taking your care of yourself and others. So thanks for taking the time to join this call this afternoon. And um, yeah, it's great that you are all here. So um, today is session six and uh, Kaylee is going to be diving into climate change communication. And so, again, thanks everyone for joining us today. And just a quick roadmap of what today is going to look like. Um, we're going to quickly talk about how we're wrapping up the adaptation workbook. Um, and then Kaylee is going to talk about climate change or talking about climate change and telling your adaptation story. And then we'll quickly go over some homework for next time and some things to prepare for the discussions this week. And so, we're in session six, and that means that you have completed all five steps of the adaptation workbook. So congratulations, everyone. Um, we know it's a lot of work, and we're really excited that you've made it this far with us. And so um, I'm sure there's still things you may want to tweak or go back and think about a little bit more, but you've made it this far, and you've completed the five steps, so congratulations. And so when the course began, um, we outlined the five steps of the adaptation workbook, um, but what you probably still had questions about, oh, there we go, little animation was a little silly, kind of ruined the punchline, but <laughs> you probably still had questions about what climate change will affect your resources that you manage and what actions you can actually take to prepare for those effects. But now that you've gone through this workbook process, hopefully you feel better equipped to answer those questions and think about what those specific effects of climate, ch climate change are for your project areas and start to identify some of those adaptation actions. And so we also have evidence of your progress. Um, at the beginning of the adaptation workbook, we asked you um, what are some, or how do you feel about your ability to identify viable climate change adaptation strategies that can be applied to your local areas? And you are kind of between a two and a three on average. So a little bit iffy, but had some idea. But after step four, when we asked you this again, you really do feel more equipped to actually identify some of those adaptation strategies. And it's the same for being able to translate those into actionable adaptation tactics for your specific areas. So that's great that you feel that way and that um, your attitudes and beliefs about how you have progressed throughout this course have increased. And then we also have evidence through your adaptation plans that you've created through the adaptation workbook. And so you can download and use this plan now to reference in the future. It can help inform any management plans or other documents that you might be working on and really provide you with some of the science and research behind those climate change impacts for your local area, but also how that translates into your decisions and your intentionality behind those actionable adaptation tactics that you have selected for your project areas. And so just to remind you of where we are and what we've uh, completed throughout the adaptation workbook, um, we really wanted you to be able to practice using adapta the adaptation workbook to really think about adaptation on the ground and how to apply it. And so you've used the adaptation workbook, you're invested in this process, and hopefully you can use it again and will continue to use it as you think about climate adaptation for other projects that you're working on. You've also used your expertise and local knowledge to apply these tools to your local project areas. You've documented your intentionality behind your thinking and can refer to this as you start to implement your management actions into the future. And through the adaptation workbook, we're really hoping that through these Zoom calls and the discussions, we've created this community of practice. So even though we're meeting virtually, hopefully you've had a chance to talk with others who could be working on similar projects or in a similar location and really think about some new ideas and tools and Thank you for joining this cohort of practitioners who are really thinking about climate change adaptation. And so with that, um, in terms of wrapping things up, we're gonna talk about climate change communication today and provide some instructions for finishing up the adaptation workbook and sharing your story. And so I'm gonna hand it over to Kaylee, but 
in the meantime, congratulations because you're on the home stretch. And so it's very exciting that uh, you've gotten this far. So with that, I'll stop sharing my screen, Kaylee, and pass it off to you. Thank you. I get set up here. Um, I also apologize, my neighbor is getting her lawn mowed, so I don't know if you can hear background noise, uh, but if it gets too loud, just let me know. I think he already did the pass, like, by my window, so. Okay. Can you see my screen? We're good? All right. So, congratulations, everyone, on finishing the workbook. Woohoo! Um, we're going to talk about how to communicate climate change and maybe how to communicate your new plan with others. So first of all, everyone here is awesome for taking the first step and having this course to add climate change to your projects. So you're done with the workbook and you are the awesome person who took this course so you can pat yourselves on the back. So if as professionals we're integrating climate change into our work, and then of course we not only need to understand it, but we need to be able to communicate that information about climate change with others. So maybe we need to answer client questions or concerns or think about drawing in public engagement and new partners. So we're going to talk about some tips to help make climate change conversations go more smoothly. So I would guess that most of you guys are on board with climate change, but like what about the rest of the country? So Yale Program on Climate Change Communication has done um, a lot of surveys and studies, and they have found um, six different audiences within the whole public audience with different views on climate change, and that's what these um, bubbles on the bottom of the screen are. So most of the population actually seems to be alarmed or concerned about climate change. So even though sometimes it feels like um, everyone but you maybe is a denier or a skeptic. Many people actually do believe that climate change is a problem. So you can use the Yale program on climate change communication to see different survey questions um, in a map. Uh, you can look at the nation as a whole or states or congressional districts, metro areas, and counties, and this is a map of counties. But maybe you don't like looking at maps, so they have um, underneath their map is a bar graph of each of the different questions they ask where you can see um, the responses for that. So this one is a national view and these are the different questions on the side here. So just an example of how you can use it, you could pull out maybe the county where you live or maybe where you're going to go give a talk or do some work so that you can get an idea of what people in that county um, as a public believe. So uh, you can pick your question from the drop down bar, you can see it on the map or you can scroll down and see a bar graph. So I live in Livingston County, which is shown here. Uh, and so this is just a random slice of my neighbors where I live and it actually seems probably pretty accurate to me. So you can go there to find out more about what kind of audience you are gonna see with the public. And then this graph here in this paper highlight the results of a survey of Canadian foresters regarding climate change perceptions. So the overall finding from the study was that foresters are more concerned about climate change than the general population. So we just looked at that bar graph of like the national level concern about climate change um, and it was about in the 60s and this is in the high 80s. So we can see that, I mean, that was the US and this is Canada, but probably maybe pretty similar. Uh, so basically what this is saying is that foresters think climate change is happening and generally agree as a professional body. And that makes sense because foresters are the people in the woods, just like all of you guys, even if you're not official foresters, and they're out there observing the changes. So that gives you a little bit of an insight on just like, a general random audience, um, an audience of your peers as foresters, and then like a place where you can go and learn about climate change opinions. So if we are talking to an audience about climate change, what else can we do to reach our audience? So if we want to reach our audience, we need to know about our audience. And so maybe that means looking at the Yale program on climate change maps, or researching about our specific organization that we're going to write to or talk to or ask for funding. 
And then a big part of knowing your audience is knowing their values. Um, what do they think is important? An easy way to know their values is by listening to them. And that seems very obvious, but listening helps build trust in you as a communicator and in your message. So people are not just going to base their decisions on climate change, they're going to decide according to their values. So it's important to listen and learn what those values are. What do they care about? What are their goals? And what are they trying to do and accomplish in their work? Okay, so we're understanding and we're appealing to those values held by your audience, and that can make it easier for those audience members to recognize climate change as a personally meaningful issue. And it can make it easier for you to engage in a good discussion about climate change risks and opportunities in the place that you are. So maybe you're talking to wildlife enthusiasts and you want to talk about how climate change might affect local birds. Or maybe you're talking to a recreation group that like loves winter sports. So you can connect winter precipitation patterns um, to their skiing or snow snowmobiling habits. So these are just two um, examples of, but you can kind of get the idea how you can identify your audience and then tailor your message to your audience based on their own values. So people value birds and they value, you know, winter skiing, but we can make pretty good connections talking about self-transcending values. So self-transcending means considering oneself an integral part of the universe. Um, so it's basically thinking, beyond yourself and beyond your personal desires and having more of a community approach, sort of like leaving behind a better future for your children. So this means we wanna focus on bigger picture ideas like making changes to build healthier forests that are able to respond to future changes um, rather than emphasizing like a bottom line money approach that is only important to like a particular person at a particular time. So if we want to make connections with our audience, we want to talk about those um, local climate observations and impacts. And when we talk about these local connections, then we can help reduce the sense that climate change is a distant issue. So thinking about a climate change being distance, the distance comes from three different places. We think about climate change as distant in space, like it's not happening here where we are. We think about it distant in time, like it's not happening right now, it's gonna happen in the future. And we think about it distant in like a species sense, like, oh, it's not happening to us. So if we look at the climate change poster child, the polar bear, polar bears are in the Arctic. They're not here with us, um, hopefully. There's still ice up in the Arctic, it's not melting right now. And also, like, we're not polar bears, our neighbors aren't polar bears. Um, there's a big distance issue between us and polar bears. But when we introduce those specific local impacts and changes for the audience's place, that kind of helps close that distance gap. And we move from distant concern to local action. So climate change isn't just happening to like polar bears that we're sad about, but they're far away. This is how climate change affects us specifically. So maybe we have warming temperatures too like polar bears, or maybe we're likely to get more rain events that will affect our backyard or our parklands or our forest soils and places that we care about. So when we close that distance issue with local specific issues, we can help the audience identify ways that climate change may change our forests or watersheds and put certain communities or resources where we live at risk. And another way to make things more specific and connect with audiences is to scale down well-known disasters into local impacts. So this might seem a little bit counterintuitive to people because we usually talk about how individual weather events cannot be attributed to climate change, but we can talk about climate changes that make these extreme events more common and how that affects our community locally. So we look at the mechanics behind disasters, such as warm ocean temperatures and hurricanes and talking about how oceans are projected to continue warming. Or we could think about big fires and how warming temperatures are extending fire seasons. Uh, there was just a big flooding event in mid-Michigan near where I live, um, where I'm from too, where the, there were dam failures from heavy downpours. And extreme precipitation is projected to become more frequent in the Midwest. 
So that's a connection that can help start climate conversations. So there were a lot of other factors that went into the dam failure, but having these connections can be a good starting point to talk about how communities can come together to overcome disasters and challenges and what we can do to lessen the severity of those effects. So when we're being specific about our local impacts, we can list them as multiple reasons for our climate change plans. Maybe we want to increase diversity in our forests and reduce the risk of impacts like pests and diseases and warmer temperatures. Or maybe thinking about those local impacts of disasters. Maybe we want to reinforce our infrastructure to reduce the risk of damage from hurricanes and flooding and sea level rise. So this helps us show that the benefits of one idea can help reduce the severity and the risk of many different impacts. So it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone, sort of along those lines. Okay, so we're connecting with our audience, we're learning about their values, we're making it about their location and about specifics, but we don't wanna get bogged down in politics. So it's easy to be like, whoa, climate change is a science thing, it's not a political issue, but it's very often made into one in reality. So we can use a couple of different ways to avoid that and engage, engage with everyone regardless of political affiliation. So some of the things that we already talked about, making local connections to climate change impacts to help people across the political spectrum have greater support for local policy action. If we talk about big impacts like droughts or fires and the mechanics behind them, that can also bridge the divide. And then talking about things and values and themes that resonate widely with everyone, like jobs and beautiful forests and native habitat and places to recreate. So that can help us reach everybody. So if we don't want climate change to be a political issue, then we don't want to rely on politicians or the media to educate and communicate accurately with people. We want to use trusted messengers to provide simple, clear messages. So those messengers can be us as scientists, or we can engage with faith networks or health professionals or other conservation organizations and partners, depending on who our audience is. And then if we want to empower our audience, we can do this by focusing on benefits and solutions to climate change. So we don't want to be like doom and gloom, the planet is going to be on fire, what are we going to do about it? We want to have more productive and positive messaging. So if we emphasize the terrible fatalistic aspects of climate change, it's just to make people feel helpless. So we want to focus on positive messaging so that people will feel productive, like they can do something about climate change. So maybe we're gonna have warmer temperatures and we're gonna have a change in hardiness zones and we can plant some different species and we can all get excited about that. Or maybe we can change our mentality into an I can do it mentality by giving people examples and ideas and steps to take to make a difference for climate change. Things that they can do personally or things they can do locally in their community to help them empower and take action. So that might seem overwhelming, like providing ideas and examples and steps for people so that they can feel like they can do it and have an I can do it mentality, but it doesn't have to be super complicated. So maybe as an example, we're having more intense precipitation events and we want to reduce soil erosion through best management practices. This could simply be tweaking things that we're already doing. And if we're already doing some of these steps, then we already have the I can do it mentality because we're doing it. So maybe we're going to explain to the public or whoever our audience is um, about stabilizing roads or skid trails or timing harvest to avoid wet periods or maybe we suggest berms or other ways to divide, divert water so that the water goes into the forest soil rather than washing the soil out. So you probably already have several good examples and ideas and solutions that can help your audience feel positive and productive. It doesn't have to be anything complicated or new or showy or flashy. So those are some quick tips. So now you have tips for climate change communication and you're done with step five in the workbook. So what are you gonna do now? Um, now we're thinking about maybe securing funding for those adaptation plans, thinking about all the, the money that goes into those new cool tactics we wanna do or tweaks from stuff that we've already done before. So if we want to appeal for funding, we need to start with effective communication and storytelling. So we are gonna tell adaptation stories. 
So telling your adaptation story can give you an opportunity to highlight the benefits of just doing good management. You are managing for long-term benefits, you're managing for ecosystem function, and for a range of future conditions. So all of this is part of your climate change adaptation plan. So we're going to make our stories about our lands or our projects and just getting this management done. So we've already hit on this a bunch, um, but to tell a good story, you need to think about your audience. Who is your audience? Think about how your adaptation plan that you've created might be communicated differently for different audiences. Maybe not the one you like immediately think of, but like what would your story look like if you were communicating it to the wider community or a funding agency, not just like your supervisor or somebody. So how do we want to do this? We want a logical sequence of ideas to connect the series of dots into a coherent story. So we want to include specific details about your adaptation plan and what you've been doing, um, but just the level of detail to get your point across. We don't need to um, overload it with all the information that you did. You already did all the work and now we want just a little story about it. So we want that bigger picture here and how does what you're doing connect to climate change, to vulnerabilities, and to ecosystem management or conservation. So this is just an example storyline to follow. You start with your place and purpose, move on to key risks from climate change, adaptation actions to address the risks, and then the benefits and outcomes of your actions. So does this sound familiar? Maybe you can see how you could use this to tell the story of how you've gone through the workbook. You've already done all the hard work. So it is your turn to shine and you're going to develop an adaptation story presentation to share with all of us, the instructors and your classmates. And this is what we're going to be doing next week. You will have five minutes to share your story and that's about one minute and 15 seconds per slide and we will be timing you. I will be timing you if I'm on your session. So think about that five minutes. So the point of it is that we, um, and all those slides that I've just presented is that we want you to tell us a simple story. We don't want every literal detail in your workbook. We want a five minute story. We don't want like a whole series of stories or a saga or anything like that. And you can be as creative as you want to, but I'm going to share a general template that we have that you can follow. So the template just looks something like this, and we'll be sending out a PowerPoint presentation link for you. So to start out, tell us who you are, what your project is, where you're located, and what is your purpose for adaptation. We want to see cool pictures, maps, and ways for you to tell us how your project is special and what your management goals are. So again, this is just a template. You can customize it however you want. Just remember you have one minute and 15 seconds to get through the slide. So moving on in your story, we wanna know some of your most important climate change impacts, challenges, and opportunities. Same thing, not all of them, but some of the main ones that impact your site and how it might make it harder or easier for you to achieve your management goals and objectives. And then let us know how you're planning on addressing those impacts and challenges. What adaptation actions do you recommend and plan on incorporating? Are these new ideas? Are they tweaks to your normal management style? And of course, not an exhaustive list, but the ones that pertain to the story that you're trying to tell us. And then of course, the last thing is what kind of key outcomes you hope to achieve through this project and with your adaptation actions. So we will be using the lecture time and all discussion times next week, the week of June 8th, to share these stories. So you're going to share them with the instructors and all the, also the classmates who sign up for this session. So if you follow this tiny URL link, you can sign up for a five minute slot during one of the sessions. And you can pick any day that you want. It doesn't have to be your um, normal discussion time. And I think Courtney was going to post the URL in the chat. And the URL will be sent in a follow-up email, so don't worry if you don't grab it right now. So for next week, finish up the adaptation workbook, including homework six, then work on summarizing your project into an adaptation story to share with everyone um, and any other audience that you think would be useful. We will provide you with the template and you will provide us with a five minute story. So try to get all this stuff done by Monday or at least before your designated time slot. 
And then you can see there's some adaptation, there's some optional reading here that you can find in the Getting Started Guide. And if you are feeling stuck or you need help moving on, then please reach out to an instructor. Um, an instructor was assigned to you and you should have met with them a couple of weeks ago for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. And so you can reach out to them and they'd be happy to help you with your project. And any of us are happy to help as well. Also, as a bonus, we would love if anyone would be willing to share your project as one of our adaptation demonstrations. So you can find all of our adaptation demos online at the foristadaptation.org site. And so this is much more simple than it sounds. We have a template for a demo page, just a web page, that you can fill out and provide photos for that web page. And then one of the instructors could write up a first draft for you, or we could edit it, and we can work together on it. So let us know if you are interested in sharing your project as a demo, and we would be so happy to work with you and feature you on our website. And lastly, there is a discussion this week. This is the last discussion for the course. So come to your session prepared to talk about your adaptation approaches and actions and monitoring ideas. And then next week is sharing your adaptation story. So sign up for a slot. And that's it. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. And we will see you at discussion this week and next week for stories. Thanks a lot.